You are the daughter of someone that I've interviewed before. Yeah. One of the working girls. Yes. In South Central. Her, her name was Tania. Yo, What's going wait, on with uh, Tania? You are, you're already Tania. over it. I feel like she started being jealous of me. Uh, I broke up already? It was just last <laughs> week. Do you have a spending addiction? Oh, yeah. She used to abuse me. She used to go on live. Your antibiotics. But you want to go get hit on. Um, expose me, embarrass me. She used to post my messages. Yes, yeah, she is a child. You regret having kids? No. This is... 35 years of hard work. The same thing she's doing now, this has been happening like since like four or three years ago. He does not like my daughter being on the street, so we're arguing about that all Do you like your daughter being on the street? Heck no. Heck no. It was just her birthday. I'll talk about that, and I'm going to tell you what she did. I'm a finesser at heart. I'm going to always get what I need to get. Spilling, finessing, whatever. Dealing, finessing. You is poor. So that's why now I'm just used to it. Has all the attention, the, the social media fame been a problem? I mean, um, that, that's what it seems like to be a problem with you guys. Man, a total problem. Like, Cause okay, like, you know when you lose your and you start, you know, being a certain way, right? Girl, she's still acting like 10 year old. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, hey y'all. These guys are like the definition of toxic relationship. That's messed up. I did not raise you like that. Like, put some respect on my name, your mom. And why do you have this on your forehead? What is that? You know, um, Apple don't fall too far from the tree. She has a father too. Yeah, you seem to, you seem to have it figured out. Are you similar to your mom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm not, I'm not as, um, how you say, it? conniving? I'm the one who laid down and kept it. You know, I could have had an abortion. Mm. I'm not asking my goodness her. Welcome to BJ Investigates, a show I just created and might never do again. The last episode that I made about Mark Leta, apparently y'all didn't like it very much because specifically, I guess you wanted me to go harder on Mark Leta. Where's the scandal? I don't see any scandal. Well, let's get into the scandals right now. I was trying to be nice to him. I was legitimately trying to like not go that hard on Mark Leta. Now what we're gonna be talking about today is gonna pertain to two subjects on Soft White Underbelly. One of them, we'll say her name is Nova, a at the time 13 year old who was living on Skid Row whose mother had lost custody of her. The other one, as promised, is gonna be Rebecca. Now, it's like 500 videos about Rebecca, so I really, I can't get into the whole Rebecca story today, I don't have time. But what I do wanna talk about is the very ominous, very perturbing, disturbing video that did just come out featuring Rebecca, where Mark seems to be trying to ingratiate himself in Rebecca's legal affairs, getting a lawyer for her, but not only that, wanting to be on the phone with the lawyer. And you know what, good for Rebecca for saying she wanted to speak with her lawyer privately, but we'll get into that as we get into the video. On December 7th, 2023, Mark Leta posted a video on his channel, and the video was of a naked, uncensored child. The child was introduced to the audience as Nova. Believe it or not, Mark didn't just stop there. He conversed one-on-one -on -one with this child about sex work and other things, and there appeared to be no parent or guardian there with Nova. Have you, have you been working some of the streets as a prostitute? How, how long has that been going on? Since May. Since May? Yeah. Is it a horrifi horrifying life for a 13-year-old girl? Yeah, um, every time, like, like before I go to the blade or anything, like, my stomach, it'll feel like I'm finna throw up, like, or I gotta use the bathroom. It's just... Do these men know you're 13? <laughs> In the interview, Mark allowed this child to advertise her illegal services and even encouraged her to disclose where potential assailants and predators could locate her to take advantage of her even more than the sickos in her life already had. How did you get introduced to that? Um, at 13. She texted me at like 3 o'clock in the morning and was like, what you doing? I'm like, nothing, um, laying down. I'm like, what you doing? And she like, I'm out trapping. And I'm like, trapping? She sent the picture and I'm like, you do that now? And she like, yeah, it's fast money. You should do it with me. I told my mom, I'm like, I'm about to go do a TikTok downstairs. And she was like, okay. And I'm like, um, can I do a TikTok in your car? Da -da -da. She gave me the keys. I put the keys next to the door and I, I ran away. I, I went and I got in the car and she was with this nigga. He had tattoos all over his face. He was playing music. He looked like a gangbanger. He was a gangbanger. He was a pimp. And I didn't even know that he was a pimp. So we had went to the um, Crenshaw Mall. So, so your mom, just for, for those that are not aware, your mom was working as a prostitute as well? I don't know. 
That's what she told me in that interview that she did with me. She told you that? Yeah. I seen a video of my mom on Fig. I don't know if it's true. I hope it's not true. But it looked like she was on Fig. She said that she was walking from a club, but she doesn't go to clubs. And I heard in the past, like, when I was, like, five and six and stuff, they used to tell me, like, oh, your mom is getting um, money from dudes. And I'm like, I'm like, maybe they're just friends, but... Mm, so, sometimes I think, yes, yeah, she is a problem too, but sometimes I think, no, she's not, because she has three babies to worry about at home. You feel me? In my opinion, it was an advertisement advocating for normalizing and encouraging child <laughs> Truly nothing is sacred to the likes of Mark Leta. So that interview airs. And look, Mark's audience is used to deranged and depraved lunacy from this circus of a channel. I mean, just look at what he had his assistant do to that one man's t but this blatant exploitation of a child was a bridge too far even for them. See, a huge issue that the audience took with the initial video was that Mark took no efforts to censor the child's exposed chest. In the video, the child is wearing a completely see-through top, like there was absolutely no mistaking the child's entire anatomy. So when taken together with the full context of the video, like the fact that they were discussing sexual activities and services, advertising the exact location and types of illegal services that the child was being subjected to, even Mark Leta's audience simply couldn't just tolerate that this was art. The comment section blew up entirely. And from time to time, when Mark shits the bed like this, he'll delete a whole video. The man's extraordinarily fragile ego can simply not tolerate even the smallest inkling of criticism. So he did end up doing the right thing, in my opinion, by taking down that uncensored video. Unfortunately, he re-uploaded the disgusting video to his channel again, partially censoring out the child's areolas. Another issue that his audience took with the video was that the child had said her mother had lost legal custody or guardianship over her some months or years prior. You, you, so you're, you're supposed to be staying with your mom? Yeah, but she kicked me out in December last you, year. You just got kicked out on this show. I'm gonna keep pushing. You, but you, you told me out there that you were, you're in the system? Yeah, I'm in the system. I don't, nobody has custody of me. No one has custody of you? I, my mama lost custody of me like two years ago because when she was abusing me and stuff, yeah. So technically speaking, it was unclear who, if anyone, actually gave legal consent for Mark to air this video, publish the video, take the video even. She called me and I'm like, oh babe, the soft white underbelly video is out. She like, mom, what? I'm like, yeah, she like, so you gave consent to him? I said, yeah, you did the video. She like, so you gave him consent? I'm like, yeah. She like, did you see it? I said, yeah. Speaking of legalities, the California Penal Code 311.10 makes it a crime to advertise, sell, or distribute child cornography. This includes transporting, producing, possessing, or duplicating any of this type of material. It's a crime to share child corn. It's a crime to hire, employ, use, persuade, or participate in the production of this type of abusive material. And it is a crime to advertise, sell, or distribute it. Mark had taken issue in the original video with people being upset about his actions. He basically said that anyone upset with this video just has too good of a life. This conclusion obviously and of course failed to consider that maybe people just have a soul and a conscience and feel bad for the child he was exploiting. But as usual and coming as a surprise absolutely not to me, Mark took it a step further yet again by letting us all know that this wasn't even the worst of the materials. Oh no. He actually said, he admitted, he said that there was much more, quote, salacious material that he had saved for his more depraved audience who likes to see the worst of the worst. This segment of his audience pays a monthly subscription fee for this content. Salacious, just to remind you, is a word that specifically refers to sexual content. So Mark admitted to producing sexual content of this child and was offering it for sale to any predator on the internet that would like to see that type of content. You just have to pay the $10 tier. That's what it is. If you want to see child that's what you have to do. You just pay the $10. That's all you have to do. Again, it's unclear who, if anyone, could legally consent to him even interviewing the child in the first place. So that happened, and then I guess to atone himself of the guilt, Mark decided to have the child's mother on the channel as well. The child's mother goes by the name Tania or Tanea, and she is a certain type of you know what worker. The child's biological father is also in this line of work. You know, um, apple don't fall too far from the tree. She has a father too. The mother seemed like an attention-seeking narcissist who really hated her own daughter and was jealous of her. I feel like she started being jealous of me. We're gonna pin my right YouTube. 
but yeah you guys follow me or whatever and but i don't know these people so that's just speculation even beyond that some higher up connections started to be made this lady had actually already been on Mark's channel before. She was in an interview published on New Year's Eve, 2022. I got myself into a situation where I was about to get sex trafficked. And this was like, this was like three years ago. It was a close one. You know, I, I came up on this prince and he was Arabian and he flew me to Miami and he said I was gonna be there for two weeks. We were in a $30 million house and I ended up being there for a month and I had to escape, okay? And we were meeting so many girls and girls from Love & Hip Hop was coming in the house and celebrities was there and all of this stuff, but it started to get real weird. You know, it was a lot of drugs. I don't do hard like that. Like I was smoking weed, you know? And they were doing hard drugs and stuff. And it was just like, it was getting, like my gut was telling me something bad is about to happen. He was trying to like distract us. We're buying this stuff. We was going shopping and doing all these things. and. For some reason, I felt like I'm used to getting shit, but like this right here, where am I about to be tomorrow? And why are we still here? So then he says, well, we're gonna go to Cuba. So the girls start talking in the house and they're like, girl, I gotta get back home. And he said that I can't leave. And I'm like, well, what is he gonna do with us? And you know, we had went to some celebrities house and we ended up at P Diddy's house. And I just started hearing conversations and I just got sex trafficking from it because, you know, I heard the prince saying something like, oh, you can have whoever you want. Like he was like selling us, you know? So I'm like. Mark loves to signal his favorite and often most deranged interviews by posting them on holidays. So this tracks right on. Also this lady, Nova's mother, Tanea, had been trying to launch her online persona for at least a year by the time her underage daughter appeared on Mark's channel. Actually, she has been trying to make it since at least 2011. Last on Surviving yeah. the Gangsta. It was just a dream. To get caught slipping would be my worst nightmare. All right, have it your way. If you got unalive me, just unalive me. If I was going to unalive you, I could have been unalive you. This is romantic to him, I bet. I can't do this. He's basically forcing me. Yes, she's yours. She's supposed to look like you. She was reportedly on a deranged reality show called The Ladies of Fig or something, I don't really know. And she also had an active YouTube channel of her own and it was up and running by this point as well. My other page went up. I got a surprise for y'all. I'm posting other content on there. I can do all things so grass so strict as me. On November 17th, 2023, just a couple weeks before her naked child would be advertising illegal services to a worldwide audience, Tanea posted a video of herself and her then boyfriend getting manicures in downtown LA. So, we're here. Finally, we made it. I really Because it was Halloween. They suggested that, you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm just glad we're here because. He was trying to thank you. Duck and dodge this pedicure. And that's where the plot starts to thicken even more. Guess who her boyfriend was in the video? A clown by the name of Crip Mac, a well-known gang member who rose to fame on another deranged podcast, a friend of Mark, No Jumper by Adam Grand Mason, AKA Adam 16, AKA Adam 22. But this got me to wondering, hold on, wait a second. Both the mother and the daughter have admitted to participating in S work. The mother has admitted a year prior on camera to being a sugar baby, which means that a man was paying her money for her companionship and other services. The mother's former partner, which would be Nova's father, was identified as a pimp. Word on the streets is that uh, Crip Mac has been spotted with your baby mama. I, 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 you know, I, 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 no, 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 I'm going to say something about that. I, I, I just, no, 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 we, I just left her house and she said, I said, you Crip Mac? She said, ugh, no. She nigga, look it, man. Since, since you brought it up, I'm finna go ahead and air it out. She want to be famous, bro. So it really just made me wonder, what is the connection to this gang member clown Crip Mac? Was he perhaps a pimp himself of sorts? Now hear me out. Is it possible that Crip Mac, as Tanea's boyfriend and Nova's stepfather of sorts, could have arranged the meeting between Mark and Tanea in the first place all the way back in 2022? Or maybe he could have arranged the meeting between Nova and Mark because he would have been acting in a way, like I said, as her stepfather of sorts. Does Mark have gang members trolling down Figueroa Street to bring in fresh blood for his deranged show? Baby. And her daughter out there on the motherfucking corner. You don't care nothing about your daughter. And you wonder why she came out, how the she came out. I really don't know the answer to any of this. It's just things to think about.
So anyway, that manicure video was on November 17th, 2023. And about two weeks later, on November 29th, 2023, Crip Mac, the gang member clown, had a falling out with another clown named China Mac. And it was announced that Crip Mac would be going back to jail soon. And about a week later, December 7th, 2023, that prediction would come true. As you can see in this video, Crip Mac was indeed arrested and booked, and I guess put in jail. The same exact day is when the Naked Child's interview was published to Soft White Underbelly. So again, I just gotta wonder, when was the video of Nova even taken? When was it recorded? It must have been much earlier than that very day. Well, we get more clues from the child's mother, Tanea herself, on her own channel. The next day, December 8th, 2023, is when Tanea went back on Soft White Underbelly and talked a little bit more about her child with Mark. And a day or two after that, on December 9th or 10th, Tanea posts a video with her child on her channel saying that the child, Nova, did not want to go to school. So I basically let you just make the choice yeah, you let me and wait. Yeah, you let me, you gave me more leeway now. But like, I don't like what you're you just doing You don't let now. me leave. Like, you, you be like, stay, oh, you can't go this, you have to ask me. I don't know what Tanea really expected, but the general population was very upset with her for essentially pimping out her own kid for views. I said you could get a pink iPad, go on online school, be on some fly stuff, and you say, yeah, that sounds cool. So you could at least do that. Mm -hmm. I bet. <laughs> bet. I don't think Tanea liked or expected the backlash. And like I said earlier, I do think the woman is a psychopathic narcissist. So nothing is really off limits for these people. But again, what do I know? I'm not a doctor. But Tanea did seem to be trying to take the blame for the whole ordeal off of herself and to put it onto Mark. She said that Mark Leta is the reason that Nova was wearing that see-through bikini top bra. She said Mark offered to pay Nova extra money for wearing a revealing top, which I completely believe because the man is a fucked up sicko with no morals or ethical boundaries who will do anything for money, but that's just what I think. The man is dangerous and he needs to be locked up in an asylum and ideally lobotomized, but again, what do I know? Hi guys, I'm Lima, the one you've heard so many wonderful things about. Tanea also seemed to imply that Nova's video had been recorded much earlier than it was actually published because she describes a timeline where Mark Leto was essentially hounding her for the consent to post Nova's interview. It's like, oh, I hear that your daughter is on the street. Um, if you want extra money, go find her so I can interview her. So I was like, you want me to recruit my own daughter? Like The bottom line on this though, is that I think she's also a liar. So it's really hard to figure out which parts of her story are true and which are not. In any event, by New Year's Eve this past year, 2023, again, they love holidays, Crip Mac would come back online and state that he and the child's mother, Tanea, had broken up. Oh, she's on blue fentanyl. She scammed me out of all the OnlyFans money. Blue fentanyl. Yeah. Among other allegations, he alleged that Tanea is a, quote, junkie. That's blue fentanyl is crazy. That sounds crazy. Good. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Nah, it's out here, though, on phone them. That's, yeah, that's, that's really she, what's that's out here. That's why she's so scrawny and she look like she's dying. I felt sorry, Fiber, but I'm not with no... No shit, they got a million kids in a drug habit. What the fuck? I look like a church. <laughs> but this video is proof that Crip Mac is getting finessed by his new girl, bro. Oh, huh. That other sitch, she was trying to let us know. The one that, uh, um, tape leak. This nigga paid for me to be his girlfriend, like. <laughs> and at this point, I'm just starting to wonder, with all these overlapping cast of characters who have been all on each other's channels and who have financially benefited from that over and over since at least 2022, which was two years ago at this point. What really is the connection with these people? What really are the charges on Crip Mac or whatever his name is? Then there's this other guy, Mark Leta, isn't arrested. Why not? I don't know. But it just makes me wonder, hmm, how did Mark actually meet Tanea? Could it have been through her boyfriend? Because the last time we talked about Mark Leta, we learned he met one of his biggest, his really his biggest viral hit at that point, Kelly, from her boyfriend. At this point, we know Crip Mac was Tania's boyfriend. I don't know, just things to think about, things to think about. I'm sure as you can imagine, and I'm sure as some of you know, there is a whole lot more to the story, but I really just wanted to hit the highlights. In my opinion, and from my reading of the California Penal Code, Mark Leta has violated more than half of the child pornography statutes by soliciting, encouraging, producing, financing, paying for, distributing, and selling sexual materials of a child. And he should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law and spend some time in prison, but innocent until proven guilty. And I'm not a prosecutor, so I guess they'll just have to let the cards fall where they may with that. Now, for Mark himself, he has come out and spoken in his own defense 
And that leads us to the next subject of this video. Not long after the whole alleged child bleep fiasco, wherein Mark Leta is selling salacious sexual materials of a child on his private website, he spoke about the issue with another repeat subject on his channel. In this interview, Mark, a reptilian clown with no soul or conscience, attempted to defend his actions of posting himself discussing sexual acts with a naked child. He implies that critics of this deranged lunacy were crazy and just too soft. And he made up an unbelievable excuse that he, quote, didn't see the naked child because he didn't see or notice that the naked child was indeed naked because he's, quote, not a tits man. I don't know. I'll put in the clip what he actually said here. It was freaking deranged. It's going to do your, 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 nipples are, your nipples are showing you're going to get in I'm trouble. Sorry. I'm going to get in trouble. Like I got in trouble. I don't have tits. A I'm a ago. dude. I'm a man. I have to, f I have to eat. Isn't that, isn't that weird? That, I'm like, out of I did a video of a, of a 13 year old prostitute and she, she had a, a, a bikini top that I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that you could see through it. Oh really? Like I'm not a breast man, so I'm not really looking at her breasts, but. What do you like in a woman's body? The shape of her waist and hips and all that. Yeah. Legs. So you like more like like curved kind of long curving like something tall, you can grab tall, on. tall and thin with nice curves. Tall and thin but nice curves, yeah. Which is not the easiest mix to get. No, it's hard. It's really what's it say on that total there? Say so basically because his sexual proclivities are more susceptible to thighs and ass, he would have been more focused on those areas of the child rather than her obviously exposed breasts. And even this part is so deranged and disgusting. The man is saying, I'm not a tits man, so I'm not looking at the chest of a child. What What if he was a tits man? Then it's okay to look at the tits of the child. It's disgusting. Something's wrong with this lunatic. Anyway. The fact that he didn't notice that she was naked makes absolutely not one shred of discernible sense to me, and it's probably because he's a bold-faced ass liar. But I'm not in his head, and I really don't know. Maybe he's telling the truth. Anyway, in this interview with Rebecca, Mark attempts to clear his name and, I guess, his conscience by blaming the public, the mother, the child herself, the audience, basically anybody but himself, which is asinine because he alone recorded that video, edited it, and put it up for the world to see. Now, Rebecca has been on Mark's channel probably dozens of times at this point, and she was even targeted by Lima from Aura, the lady who took over Amanda Rabb's healthcare and used her experimental VR tech on her before she tragically unexpectedly died in her care in an Aura facility. She first went on there and she looked completely different. Then when she, the next time she go on there, she looked worse and she get worse, worse, worse. The way that you get somebody that doesn't want to get help into treatment is through something called an LPS conservatorship. And that's what we're using for Amanda. When I was smoking, I'm like in the cut and then I'm gonna get murdered like you know what I'm saying I'm behind the scenes I'm annoying everybody and then I get murdered she had passed away they did the autopsy they looked at her medical records back in September 2022 Lima and Mark discussed Rebecca and how they wanted to put Rebecca under the same program that Amanda had died in what the fuck Lima discussed having worked with or met Rebecca in the past. They can call me and yell at me at random times of the day. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, it's, got, it really got out, out of yeah. control. I mean, it's a shame because it's like you're a crusader almost for helping these people. Like, whether it's Amanda, who tragically passed away, but, but at the end, Amanda was as sober as you and I are right now. And, and, and she said some of the sweetest things about you. you know, she said to me privately that you, you saved her life. Yeah. And whether you want to find somebody else from my my channel that you wanted to help you know Rebecca would be a good yeah we Rebecca has a very close place in my heart um and I think and Bam, Bam Margera as well yeah so um uh, actually with uh Chris um and somehow it was my fault she couldn't work with her anymore or something honestly I really don't know I'll put the clip right here but Mark used this December 2023 interview with Rebecca to attempt to clear his name and his guilt and the whole potential child corn he produced, paid for, distributed, and sold. And then about a month later, in January 2024, a disturbing update happened in the Rebecca saga. Apparently, she is at risk of being deported. And for what reasons? I, I really don't know. Usually, Rebecca and Mark engage in banter, and it's and honestly, it does seem mutual and lighthearted for the most part. Exposing private parts and public property. That was, that was West Hollywood or Beverly Hills? I plead the fifth. Some commenters have speculated that Mark and Rebecca are lovers or that Mark is in love with Rebecca or vice versa, but I haven't seen a ton of evidence for this theory. I am your sugar daddy. Right? I am your sugar daddy. I'm the performer. What? I'm your sugar daddy. 
insane. <laughs> but in this deportation video, Rebecca takes a much harsher and stronger stance with Mark. Mark alleges he's, quote, trying to help Rebecca, and he's contacted an immigration attorney on Rebecca's behalf. I'll roll the clip here so that you can see it for yourself, but Mark is trying to get Rebecca to discuss these legal matters with the lawyer. Would you like to uh, have a phone call to talk about your immigration issues? Oh my God. Not only in front of him, but also on camera for the entire world to see and hear. And we already established how the man feels about censoring stuff, so who knows what would have actually been published for all the world to see. This woman's name is Carla. And I will call her number right now. But Rebecca rightfully stated she didn't really want to discuss her private legal matters on camera or in front of Mark for that matter. Call her number right now. She didn't seem to like or trust the immigration lawyer either because she took the opportunity to cry for help to any other lawyer or legal adjacent person who might be able to help her. Now this is just my own personal speculation, but I think this whole Rebecca circus is an attempt to entrap Rebecca in a treatment program with Mark's associate, Lima Yeremovich, and her experimental digital health startup, Aura. And please don't forget, Lima predicted Ara's revenues for last year would be over $50 million. I mean, it's not speculation that Lima wanted to work with Rebecca at one point as recently as September 2022. It's not speculation that step one of Lima's Ara program is, quote, conservatorship or jail. So we know that the model depends on some weird rock and hard place coercion so the person cannot leave the program. I do speculate that this whole deportation thing is another mutated version of the conservatorship or jail conundrum. We'll call this one conservatorship or deportation. Again, I don't know if this is true, I'm just speculating, but we have seen a similar thing happen before with Amanda Rabb, another subject on Mark's channel. Amanda Rabb allegedly assaulted her father, Larry Rabb, who called Lima and was instructed to call the police. Larry, Mark, and Lima worked together to get Amanda put up in a rehab facility that she was not allowed to leave. Um, she, she didn't have um, any type of like healthcare directive agent or anything like that. She just had the court telling her, like, you need to go. She had att attacked her father, which was a felony, because she attacked him with a weapon. Um, and they were looking at either jail time for her. That last day that I went to court, she was set to be released. They were looking at either jail time for her. She was set to be released. And so I just petitioned, like, this is not a criminal situation. It's a mental health situation. Um, so we essentially just asked the judge if um, we cash paid her treatment and got, got her out of the system so she's not a burden on the system, would he be willing to court order treatment instead of jail time? Jail she would have been free for 10 days, right? She, not for 10 days. Um, she would have been potentially released the last time I came. So that last, that last day that I went to court, she was set to be released. She was set to be released. And so I just petitioned like, this is not a criminal situation, it's a mental health situation. So we essentially just asked the judge if um, we cash paid her treatment and got, got her out of the system so she's not a burden on the system. She was set to be released um, back onto the street because there were no other options for her. Um, and so initially when speaking to the district attorney, I notified her that this was not Amanda's first time, which was already something that was known and that, that she's in a very um, bad mental state. So based on that information is what um, made them shift gears. She was set to be released and say that if we were willing to take responsibility, so basically myself, willing to ensure that I report everything to the courthouse and make sure that Amanda doesn't violate anything and um, ensure that she follows court order, that they would consider giving her a mandated one-year plan, which would be the essential um, path of an LPS conservatorship. So Amanda was never under guardianship. She was never under conservatorship. A mandated one-year plan, which would be the essential path of an LPS conservatorship. Would he be willing to court order treatment instead of jail time? If she left, she was facing up to five years in prison. We know Mark has been trying to get Rebecca to go to rehab in Florida and elsewhere for literally years. And we know for a fact that Rebecca is on Lima's radar. Lima's sister Dahlia has accused her own mother of sex trafficking her and states that she cannot leave her apartment to even so much as sit on the bench outside. And most notably, Rebecca is clearly crying out for help. 
in this deportation video. Like I keep saying, I really don't know what's going on with Rebecca, and I really don't know if what Mark did in conjunction with Nova and her mother or whatever was a crime. I don't know how Mark met Tanea or what his relationship with Crip Mac is, but this is all still very alarming, and I believe an investigation is warranted. Honestly, I'm starting to wonder whether the local authorities know exactly who Mark Leita is and exactly what he's about, and they simply do not care to hold him accountable. We're living in sick and dark times, and I wouldn't be doing what I feel like I'm here to do if I at least didn't bring it to your attention, the people, the public. And that's pretty much all I really had to say for today. Leave in the comments below what you think. Is this a little better of a scandal for you? Love you, mean it. Okay, bye. I motivate a lot of people, so what if I motivated my daughter to say, I want to be just like my mom, da, 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 even if it's go against the grain. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you so much for clearing the air on some of this uh, yes. drama. Yes. We're going to pin my right YouTube. But yeah, you guys follow me or whatever. And I love y'all. I love the good comments. I see what y'all saying. And we're going to get through this. We're going to figure something out. If the little girl hit you up and ask you, said, I'm hungry. My mama won't let me go home. Was I wrong for sending her a cash out? She's on She also scammed me out of all the only money. <laughs> a real snake.